YouTube vinyl community, people who collect vinyl records, random people on the internet, my name is Giggins, and we're here today just to have a little chat video about why I collect vinyl and what I find so fascinating about it and what it means to me. So it means something different to everybody, and that's one thing I do find fascinating, but uh, for me, records have always been a part of my life. I grew up with them, and so it's never been something I like discovered as a grown-up. I had them when I was a kid, you know, with my parents' record collection. And hearing so much music for the first time on vinyl, like I heard the Beatles for the first time, uh, actually that was on cassette, but hearing more of their stuff, like the White Album, uh, Abbey Road, Let It Be, all those things were on vinyl because we didn't have them on tape. Hearing so much of that music for the first time and holding the jacket and being able to flip open the gatefold and like look at the pictures and stuff, it was an experience and it made me realize early on that music was something that's meant to be enjoyed and it was your entertainment. You can sit down and just listen to the music. You don't have to do anything else. You can just sit there with an album and just blank out with it. And that's fascinating. You know, when it comes to sound, when it comes to your gear, your hi-fi setup and all that kind of stuff, that's where you get really in the weeds with it and it can become subjective really, really fast. Um, really, it's just about the experience for me. It's fun. That's it. It's just fun. It's fun to collect these things. It's fun to go out on the hunt and dig through thrift stores and antique shops and, of course, record stores and see what you find. Because so much stuff that was recorded on, you know, back in the day and pressed on vinyl, so much of that has never been released on CD, let alone streaming. So a lot of the times you'll find things that have just disappeared to time. And I find that fascinating because, you know, a group of people got together and wrote something and then arranged it. And then they brought people in to record it. And then they, they pressed it and put it out and hoped it sold. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. And, you know, for some of these songs to just, vanish, poof, gone. It's a trip. So it's kind of like playing archaeologist whenever you find these records that just, who are these people, you know? For, for instance, recently I found a record on um, at, at an uh, antique store, and it's by a group called the Butterflies. It's on the Redbird label, and I grabbed it because I knew the Shangri-Las were on that label, and I was like, okay, it was written by Greenwich and Barry. And I was like, oh, this might be pretty good. The first side was called The Swim, the second side was called Goodnight Baby, and that was the better song, but I never heard of the Butterflies before. You know, I still haven't really researched them too deeply, but it was just mind-blowing that, like, all this work went into something and then just nothing happened to it. So, for me, it really is about the discovery and holding on to something that comes from a different era. So when you're buying new records, of course, that's great, too. There's nothing wrong with that. I do that all the time. But it's always fun to discover something from so long ago where you're like, what is this? And, you know, it, it, has anyone else heard this before? Or who was the last person that played it? You know, whose basement was this record in for the last 50 years? Like, what happened to this thing? That stuff is what really intrigues me. So I've made videos before. I talk about how I like when there's writing on records um, because it contextualizes it. Someone owned this. Someone lived with it. It's, you know, it's a part of someone's life. It's got a history of its own, let alone of its owner. And I love that. But it's also fun these days because so many records come on colored vinyl. So you get these wacky cool colors like red and green and blue and splatter and clear and see-through. I love that. I'm a total sucker for it. And they're getting more creative with some of the packaging I just enjoy the atmosphere, the the whole setup. I like putting a record on the player. I like using my little duster thing to take the dust off. I like playing with the treble on the EQ. I like the whole experience. You know, it's fun. Because you really get involved, you know, and taking care of it, of the record, just taking care of the whole setup. It's a very tedious process, and it takes up a lot of space, and it's inconvenient and <laughs> all that stuff. But, um there's nothing better for me than taking a record out of the shop, you know, coming home, putting it on and just sitting there with it and getting lost with it and just enjoying it for what it was or is. There's nothing better than that. You know, when it comes down to um, 
pressings like you know whether or not the the record was the recording was done digitally or on analog i couldn't give a monkeys about that because as long as it sounds good that's all i care about i'm not gonna sit there and go oh this was all done digitally blah 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 who the hell cares like <laughs> if it sounds good who cares that's always been my take you know i couldn't i just could not care less if it's a digital source or whatever so what be but um when it comes to one thing I don't like about vinyl and stuff are super high end audiophile people who put down people for the gear they have or how they're using their records or how they're listening to them. That doesn't help anybody out. You know, it's cool if you offer some advice here and there. If you're like, hey, you know, cool player, you know, if down the line you think you're going to upgrade, here's a couple of things you might want, you know, that might be cool, but. You know, when people, like, crap all over people who have the Crosley players or, you know, the suitcase-style things, those, it takes a long time to destroy an album on a Crosley player. It's fine. Is the sound the best? Not really, but it sounds decent. You know, it makes sound happen. You can actually listen to the record, and that's fine. You know, for what it is to get people into playing records, I think is fantastic. It's affordable. You know, we can go to Walmart or Target, get the record player and a couple records at the same time. That's awesome. Great way to go. But I mean, it's, it takes a long time to destroy an album. You have to play that record over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, I can make a whole video about that stuff. So if you have a Crosley, don't worry, you're fine. You're just missing out on some sound, put it that way. And like I said, when it comes to the sound, you know, I've got a, a decent setup here I've had for years. I upgraded my speakers a couple of years ago and I've upgraded my stylus and all that kind of stuff over the years. Um, I like my little setup. I have no plans of getting anything bigger or better than this because for me, this is perfect. I don't need some giant Rega turntable. I don't need these $10,000 things because they don't sound that different. <laughs> Sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. If you have some really good Macintosh tube amps and some giant speakers, knock yourself out. Um, but you know, I can't, I just couldn't imagine spending like $30,000 on a turntable. That's, that's to me, it's stupid, but Hey, not my money. Anyways, vinyl is something that I'm glad had a comeback. Uh, I remember around 2005, six, seven, somewhere in there when I discovered you could buy new records at a store, like a record store, because there just weren't that many actual record stores at that point, because they just they kind of died, and especially when MP3s started becoming the thing, so much of that culture just disappeared. Because oh, I can get all the music I want for free at two in the morning. That's where I'm gonna go. You know, nature of the beast. But it was fun to go to a record store and buy a new album on vinyl. That was a trip. You know, you get this big thing, you can hold and look at it, flip it over, you're, you're part of the experience. I've said that a couple of times now, but that's, that's the number one reason why I like vinyl. Uh, as far as the resurgence, I, you can't even call it a resurgence anymore, it's just here. We just, we have records now, it's the norm. Everybody can go buy an album now, it's not like it's a special thing for hipsters. It's like, no, you can go to Target and buy your detergent and your, you know, candy bars and your grocery food and you know pick up a record at the same time anyone can do it which is awesome it's fun to be able to go to a department store and buy an album just like how it would have been 35 years ago you know i missed the days of going to the store and buying a cassette so you know we'll never have that i that we'll never have a cassette resurgence like that i mean people do press tapes all the time but um that's a whole other video but yeah i'm gonna wrap this up here because i'm gonna start rambling soon but I enjoy vinyl because it's fun. It's a cool community to be a part of and experience and talk about with so many different people from so many different walks of life and how they got into it and, you know, what their thoughts on it are and, you know, how often they collect or if they just have a few that they really love and that's that's perfect for them. You know, one thing I'll end off this video with is don't mat it doesn't matter how many records you have. It doesn't. If you have four or five albums that you cherish and love and you play them and you enjoy them, that's your record collection, that's perfect. That's exactly for you, that's perfect. Never judge your record collection against somebody else's. It's, it just, it's not worth your time. 
Um, you know, a lot of people watch my videos and they see all this stuff here and other rooms, I got other records. Um, this is over 20 years worth of work and I've sold off probably five or 600 at some point in my life to keep the lights on. Um, this didn't happen overnight, put it that way. A lot of time, consideration, care, and money went into this thing. And it's not to show off. It's You just accumulate stuff as a human being over the years, and it's, this is what happens. Um, you know, I'm at the point where I've kind of weeded out the ones that I'm not really keen on. And, you know, for the most part, it's all stuff I absolutely love. So, I mean, it is what it is at this point. Um, but, yeah, I mean don't look at that and be like, oh man, like I, I need to have that to be considered, you know, part of the community. You don't, you really don't. <laughs> if you have four or five or six albums that you love and that's your collection, you're part of the community. If you have one album, that's cool. You know, it doesn't matter how many you have. It's the quality of what you got. And if you enjoy it and appreciate it, that's all that matters. So, um, yeah, I guess this video kind of went all over the place there, but that's just kind of how my brain works. It is what it is. Uh, yeah, let me know your comments. I'm super stoked to chat about this in the comments below. And uh, yeah, we'll have a, a good little chat about records and our collecting habits. So yeah, that's it. My name is Giggins. This has been Record Collecting 101 and a little bit of a soapbox. But uh, yeah, <laughs> take care, guys. Talk to you soon. See you later. Bye.